Welcome to Salad with a Side of Fries. I'm your host, Jen Trepic, talking wellness and weight loss for real life. We're here to clear up the myths, misinformation, bad science, and marketing to teach you how to eat and how to cheat. Are you ready? I'm having salad with a side of fries. This week, we're talking about lavender. Why? (laughs) Because I'm seeing it all over. So in March of this year, March 2024, Starbucks debuted their Iced Lavender Cream Oat Milk Matcha, Iced Lavender Oat Milk Latte, and Lavender Cream Frappuccino Blended Beverage. I know they sound like a lot. But then I saw it popping up in other places too, in like bars and other things, like things that were marketed as like health foods. And then there was a headline I saw that was more or less basically asking if lavender is this season's pumpkin spice. So I started, I was like, I admittedly didn't know a ton about lavender. I think the, there is a little bit of difference between lavender and pumpkin spice because I don't know that people are of the impression that pumpkin spice has health benefits, but I think there is an implied benefit when using lavender that people think they're going to get. Maybe I'm making that up. Do you think? I mean. Well, I've always thought lavender was like a soothing, calming, like at night. Right. Like lotion. Right. Like lavender lotion. Yeah. Right. Not to drink. Agreed. (laughs) Now, there are ways to ingest lavender. And so we'll talk about it. I want to say this with the caveat that Starbucks didn't make any health claims, but people were asking me about them. And like you were saying, normally we think of lavender either with like the fragrance or aromatherapy or the color. We generally don't think about it in terms of ingesting it. So I started to dig into it because, like I said, I didn't know a ton about lavender because full disclosure, personally for me, it like gives me a headache. It's not for me. So it's never been something that I've really dug into until now. So There are health claims around lavender, but not all of them have research or studies, at least that I could find. Now, part of that is because so like for many, many decades, maybe more, maybe centuries, lavender, like the flower and the oil were used in herbal medicine. In terms of the modern research, I categorized what I could find into four categories. So there's sleep, stress and mood, pain, and skin. So let's look at those. So on the sleep front, there are studies that suggest lavender may improve melatonin levels. So a review of 15 studies concluded inhaling essential oils like lavender helped with mild sleep disturbances. Another study with lavender aromatherapy, the people there felt more refreshed when they woke up. And then it was also, this was particularly interesting to me. There was a study of colicky babies where they used lavender oil aromatherapy massage, and it seemed to reduce the symptoms. Unusual to have studies with babies is why that was so interesting. And then there was one more study worth noting where people with anxiety or people who are challenged with, you know, anxiety, use lavender oil orally, and express that it helped them sleep longer at night. So that then leads us into the stress and mood piece. So lavender may calm the nervous system, lower blood pressure, and elevate mood. There's research specifically around anxiety and depression. So on the anxiety side, there was a meta-analysis of studies across eight different databases from inception of those databases until December, like mid-December of 2017. Short version there, a lot of studies were looked at in this meta-analysis. They concluded people with anxiety who took 160 milligrams of lavender oil capsules experienced significant decreases in anxiety. The most interesting thing I saw was a study from 2010 that compared lavender capsules to lorazepam, which is an anti-anxiety pharmaceutical. They saw that the effect of lavender was comparable to the drug. Interesting. That's interesting. Very interesting. There was another study that I wanted to note because this other one looked at lavender tea. 
So it was small sample size of older adults that had lavender tea twice a day for two weeks, and they experienced lower levels of anxiety and depression. Also on the depression front, there was a small study on postpartum women who showed lavender aromatherapy prevented stress, anxiety, and depression. And they looked at that two weeks, one month, and three months after delivery. So again, there's a mix of aromatherapy versus tea versus the oil. I'm going to talk about being careful with the oil in a minute. Let's talk about the other categories of pain and skin. So for pain, lavender essential oil can help reduce headache pain, specifically for migraines. There are a couple interesting studies, one from 2016. People with migraines who had three months of lavender therapy scored lower on a headache assessment scale than the control group. And then there was a small study of only like 47 participants in 2012 where they inhaled lavender essential oil for 15 minutes and experience reduced headache severity and frequency. Another kind of pain that was looked at with lavender is menstrual pain. So this one study had women smell lavender for 30 minutes a day for the first three days of their cycle. This group experienced less pain after two months. Now, there also may be help using lavender oil topically on the abdomen for menstrual pain. And then interesting, the National Cancer Institute recommends aromatherapy with lavender to support people with cancer managing the side effects of treatment. Some of these things with pain may connect back to the stress and mood thing. Like I'm not 100% sure on like the physiology of like why or the mechanisms of action in that, right? So there are some connections in this to me though. And then on the skin thing, so in ancient times and now, there's conversation about lavender for wound healing. So lavender oil might help. There are quite a few studies that saw supported healing by improving the skin's collagen production after surgery. And I put this in the skin category, but hair loss. So this sort of struck me because a couple weeks ago, We have the episode, the nutrition nugget about gray hair in that nutrition nugget. So this sort of, I don't know, mentally connected for me. So I wanted to mention it here. There was an animal study from 2021 that showed lavender oil stimulated hair growth within 28 days. Now, it's an animal study, so who knows, but felt like it was worth talking about. When you hear about lavender for acne, it seems like this might be based on research that was more related to lavender's antimicrobial properties, so think antibacterial. And it's also believed that this is probably why lavender was used in ancient times for burns. And then you'll also see some research showing that lavender may provide relief for eczema, dermatitis, psoriasis, itching, and rashes. And I don't know if this tracks to the pain piece. I don't know if this tracks to the antimicrobial piece, but it's interesting. So With all of this, do I think that the lavender drink at Starbucks is more appealing? I don't know. (laughs) Like, maybe for the stress part? I don't know. I also, like, I don't know how much lavender is actually in a lot of these products. You know, and by the way, like, you can use a lot of different parts of the lavender. So sometimes it's the flowers, like, they might be dried. Sometimes it's essential oils, topical oils, teas, and lotions. So the essential oil is generally for aromatherapy. The oil can be used topically or in lotions or skincare, but it is not to be ingested unless it is paired with another kind of like carrier oil. So like some of those capsules had lavender oil and I'm guessing also like a carrier oil. The flowers could be dried and used in tea or potpourri. The thing though, is that the kind of lavender used in food that's to be digested is not necessarily the best lavender for the oil. So if you've tasted something with lavender like I have, and it tastes like soap, (laughs) it's possible 
that they're using the wrong kind of lavender. So according to what I could find on the internet, the best lavender for cooking is from the species Lavandula angustifolia. I'm doing my best to pronounce that. Lavender species like Lavandula stochas, S-T-O-E-C-H-A-S, Lavandula latifolia. And then there's one that's sort of a branded one called Lavandin. Those tend to have the stronger perfuming, soapy, fragrant thing. So if you can get that kind of information, then you can look and see what kind of lavender they're using. If you get lavender essential oil, you could put a couple drops in your bath water. You could put a couple drops into massage oil. You could even put a couple drops into like distilled water and create your own room spray. But I'm going to say it again. The essential oil and lavender oil should not be ingested, right? And then, by the way, even topically, you want it with like a carrier oil. So that jojoba oil or coconut oil, things that we often hear about in skin products. Last thing, lavender tea might be your best like bang for the buck in terms of the benefit. But then I go back to that study where the older people were drinking it two times a day for two weeks. And so then I also go, well, maybe it's just the act of sitting and having a cup of tea itself. That's sort of healthful, stress-reducing, mood-boosting. I don't know. What do you think? Where's your head on all this, Dee? You shared a lot of information there about lavender. That I know. I definitely did not know about, but I'm like, I just keep thinking, I'm like, that sounds like there's some really good benefits if it's used in the right way. Um, right. It sounds to be like there's probably needs to be more research and each person's different too. Some people, like you said, I can't stand the smell or it really bothers me yeah. or, you know, that kind of thing. So it's like a, it's a try it, but definitely don't drink the, like you said, don't, don't ingest the oils. Don't, yeah. don't do that thinking it's going to be good for you. But then I got to thinking, I'm like, it would be really interesting to see the, the, the ingredients in the Starbucks drink and are they purple? And is that the lavender? I think they are a lavender color, but how they're getting, I don't know. Right. It would be interesting to find out what the ingredients are. I know. We'll have to go look at it. We'll look at it and then post it on Instagram if we can still find that info because it was in March when I saw it. Now, to your point of everybody's different, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this. A couple caveats to all of this. As you said, know yourself right? Lavender may not be for everybody. If you're going to use it topically, test it on a small area of your skin before you sort of go wild. And there was one study in 2019 that connected exposure to lavender oil to three young girls and one young boy with premature breast development. When they stopped, like when their exposure to that product was removed, the breast development went away. Now, there are some issues with that study, and there are a lot of factors at play, right? So is it possible that those products that had lavender also had other endocrine disruptors in them? Yes, entirely possible. We don't know. So we always remember correlation is not causation, but I think it's worth noting just to have in our awareness that something might be great for some people and not so great for other people. And that's what I've got on lavender. That's the scoop. Products are popping up. Let me know what you find. If you taste them, I want to know. And we'll see if we could find the details of what Starbucks is putting in theirs. D, anything else? Nope. I think you covered it. It and should say purple, though. Yeah. It is. And then it's, some. And it's beautiful. Beautiful Can't color. Complain. Yep. Not my personal favorite flavor. I would agree. But you do you. <laughs> All right. Well, as always, everybody, I'm your host and health coach, Jen Trepic. Connect with me on Instagram or all social media. I'm at Jen Trepic, J-E-N-N-T-R-E-P-E-C-K. Website is a salad with a side of fries.com. Please send a message. I want to hear from you, your takeaways, your ideas, your questions. This is also the easiest way to learn more about working with me as your health coach. Dee, thank you again for being here. Oh, thank you for having me again. Absolutely. As always, it's fun. Always. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. Oh, well, thank you.
Of course, if you are not already, join our membership program by going to glow.fm slash salad with a side of fries. This shows your support for this podcast, this community. Most importantly, it supports your health. You'll get this week's recipe for the shaved vegetable salad and your quarterly live Q&A, which is a one-on-one just you and me. Well, friends, that's it for today's episode of Salad with a Side of Fries. Congratulations for making yourself and your health a priority. Thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to click subscribe or follow on your favorite podcast platform. Share us with a friend and we'll be back next week. Always remember, you deserve it and you are worth it. Happy healthy.